Hello wonderful person, this is Anton and in today's video we're going to be talking about the idea of you attracting someone else gravitationally from a distance. In other words, let's find out how much actual force you're going to be exerting on another person just like you see Earth exerting gravitational force on the moon here. Anyway, welcome to What The Math. <laughs> So gravity is actually a very unusual and mysterious thing. As a matter of fact, even though we call it force, it's not a real force. It's more of a, a result, a result of space-time bending and folding and creating these unusual ripples, well, not really ripples, but bends in space that cause objects to basically orbit. And as a result of this, there is a force that's exerted on those two objects. But uh, what we are going to be talking about about is a little bit, I guess, more simple and a little bit tinier than what you see on the screen right now. It's not going to involve Earth, it's not going to involve a moon. It is going to involve two objects though. As a matter of fact, we're going to imagine a hypothetical scenario of you and another person, possibly someone you really love, being attracted to each other gravitationally. And we're going to do a little bit of mathematics and find out just how much force is it that you're going to be exerting on this other person and how long it will take for both of you to attract each other in space and basically flow toward each other and maybe embrace and then possibly even kiss so, and uh, assuming you're, you don't die by then. So let's do uh, some mathematics here, but also let me actually show you where all of this is going to be coming from. We're going to be using one of the units from Brilliant.org, which is the official sponsor of this channel, and take a look at the introduction to gravity, and specifically the strength of gravity, and also the relationship between gravity and distance, and gravity and mass. Now, if you actually are interested in how we're going to be using the math behind this, you should go and check out this lesson by yourself, go through some of the examples here, go through the quiz questions, and it will actually help you learn and understand the exact amount of uh, forces exerted on different objects in space and I guess just in general uh, based on their mass and their distance. But you also are going to kind of understand this Newtonian inverse square uh, force law a lot uh, better if you actually do these by yourself because I'm only going to uh, mention this relatively briefly. And based on this gravitational force formula, you can kind of see what gravity, uh, I guess the force of gravity depends on. One is the actual constant, this is a gravitational constant. Uh, two of these are masses of two different objects, and the third component here is the distance between them. And just to help you visualize how all of this relates to everything, here is basically a representation of all of this in three simple pictures. So here the force of gravity is relatively average, here it increases because of the mass increase, and here it decreases dramatically because of the distance. So these three components basically kind of influence the force itself. And so as long as we know the first mass and the second mass and the distance between uh, those objects, using the constant right here, we can then calculate the force uh, that is produced between those two objects. And then we can also calculate the acceleration that's created by them and obviously the time it takes for them to reach each other. And even though Brilliant.org actually has a very similar example that we're going to be using here, I wanted to create our own. I actually wanted to create our own example that has cool things in it like pumpkins and it's going to be pumpkins in love. And these pumpkins will represent little people, mostly because there is unfortunately no people in Universe Sandbox, so we can't really use anything to represent a person. So let's say there's going to be uh, this beautiful jack-o'-lantern and we're going to make uh, this jack-o'-lantern approximately human-like. We're going to give it a mass of about, let's say, 70 kilograms, which is... Uh, oh, there's no pounds here. Well, I guess it's about 150-ish pounds. And then we're going to have uh, the love interest for this jack-o'-lantern, whose distance is going to be only about uh, a few meters away from it. And our sad, lonely jack-o'-lantern is trying to reach the love of its life, the pumpkin that's actually right here. Now, the distance between these two objects is about 2 meters or approximately 6 feet, and the um, mass of both is the same. And so first of all, let's actually find out how much uh, gravitational force 
are they exerting it on each other? Now, 70 kilograms is pretty much average for for an adult. Uh, okay, maybe a little bit more if you're in the US and some other Western countries, but usually 70 kilograms is like average around the world. And so here we have basically like two adults in front of each other. This is about two meters. And uh, we want to find out what the actual gravitational force exerted on them. Now, there's actually quite a lot of various calculators online that allow you to calculate this really quickly. This is one from, I guess it's a place called AJ Design that have this online calculator. And so here, if I actually enter the values and press calculate, it will actually give me the value in Newtons. Now, you'll see that this is actually a really, really tiny number. It's 8.17 times 10 to the power of minus 8 Newtons. That is a ridiculously low uh, amount of force. If you actually go on Wikipedia and look up order of magnitude that displays the force, it kind of gives you an idea of where we are with this particular number. So times 10 to the power of minus 8 is around here, and this is a force of an electron uh, in a hydrogen atom. A single electron in a single hydrogen atom exerts just as much force as a person, or I guess in this case, a pumpkin of a person weight on another pumpkin of a person weight at a distance of about two meters. Now, if we were to move this distance a little bit closer, as a matter of fact, if we were to actually attract them a little bit closer to each other, uh, obviously this gravitational force would increase. And so here at a distance of one meter, this suddenly becomes uh, 3.26 times 10 to the minus seven, which is maybe about five times bigger which now takes us right here, force between two meter long conductors, one meter apart, which is by definition one ampere. But nevertheless, this is about 10,000 times less powerful as a single ion engine on a space probe, a deep space not one. And those engines are really, really, really weak in terms of actual power. And uh, it's approximately 10 million times less powerful than a single average apple that basically just sits there because by definition, a single apple uh, produces about one Newton of force. Now, if you want to see the other forces here, including things like average force of a human bite or average force of an alligator bite and so on and so forth, you can check out this link um, that I posted in the description. Um, but basically, right here, the amount of force is so little that it's barely even detectable. Nevertheless, if I were to run this in maybe accelerated time, let's accelerate this by about 60, you would see that they would slowly start moving toward each other because that force is still enough to start pushing these two pumpkins together. Now we're currently at 2.68 days. Let's see how long it takes them to actually approach each other and give each other a little kiss. Because that's really what I wanted to find out in this video. So they are producing acceleration and their acceleration, despite being so tiny, is still there. Now, I might have to actually increase this to like several hundred times per second. And you can see, there it is, there goes the pumpkin, it's moving. You can see it's slowly approaching the other pumpkin. And uh, it will probably take them less than a day to come close together. And here we go, these two beautiful creatures or not creatures, but I guess vegetables, are going to be kissing each other anytime now. So it's only been about half a day, and here we go. There it is. There is that kiss. So it took us about 0.4 days, or I guess something close to about 8 hours, to move 2 meters using the gravitational attraction between these two pumpkins, and now they became a big mega pumpkin of 140 kilograms. All right, well, that's, that's interesting. So... How about if I were to move them farther away? Well, obviously, if you were at a distance of one kilometer, the force produced now is dramatically lower. It's like close to about a million times lower than it was before. But it's still going to be there and you're still going to be attracting this person, this person-shaped pumpkin. But don't forget, we're actually using these pumpkins to represent ourselves. And I actually took 70 kilograms because that's pretty much how much I, I weigh. And so if I were to stand next to someone um, in space, I guess, if I were to float next to someone in space and the distance between us was only about two meters, it would take us uh, about eight hours to reach each other. But let's do this again with a much farther distance of one kilometer. 
And so right here we have two same pumpkins, basically same weight, same everything at a distance of one kilometer. So in other words, think of this as you and your loved one being stranded in space at a distance of one kilometer. How long would it actually take both of you to reach each other? And this is kind of think of a, a, a typical science fiction movie where one person kind of floats away from the other. So let's see if they're going to create enough acceleration between each other to actually meet. And we're going to start at, so this is 3.77 days right now and count down to how long it actually takes us. And you can see that right away, as soon as I unpause the game, they start slowly inching their way toward each other. Now this might actually take a lot longer, but as they get closer and closer to each other, they also increase the force between each other. So as the force increases, the acceleration increases as well. And so by the time that they actually are almost next to each other, their speed toward each other is actually going to be a lot bigger. But let's, let's look at this from maybe this angle. So I'll position them so you can actually see them better. And we're going to accelerate time and observe their motion. So these, this is two 70 kilogram uh, like people that are slowly attracting each other using their own gravitational forces. Now you can see that it's already almost a year and they're still kind of moving toward each other, but it's taken a lot longer. So in other words, by the time that they actually meet, they're going to be uh, significantly older. As a matter of fact, they're going to be very likely really old people. And so right about here, they're actually approaching each other a lot faster now, even though it's actually an accelerate time. And this is like several days per second. But you'll see that in about 11 and a half years. There we go. 11 and a half years. That's how long it took them to finally reach each other. So this to us suggests one thing. If you get stranded in space from your loved one, try not to separate yourselves by more than a couple of meters, because if you're farther away than that, it will take you years to meet each other. 11 and a half years. These guys are much older, much wiser, and probably have their own kids by now. Okay, that's not really true. But anyway, so that's kind of the idea that I wanted to explore in this video. And I wanted to show you how uh, not only distance, but also the mass itself influences the gravitational attraction between two objects. So hopefully now you know a little bit more about gravity and how it actually exists between everything. You and I are currently exerting gravity on each other, even though we're far, far away from each other. But you know, if there was nothing in space but us, maybe after a few hundred years we would have actually mate. And you can check out more about this concept and the concepts of gravity and, of course, other space-related concepts right here on Brilliant.org. And uh, thank you so much, Brilliant, for being the official support of this channel. Anyway, that's all I wanted to do in this video. Thank you so much for watching and thank you uh, for supporting this channel for so long. I'll see you guys tomorrow. Come back tomorrow to learn something else and subscribe if you still haven't. Let's see what happens if you explode a pumpkin. Ready? Steady? Go! Oh. Probably nothing. Well, that's very disappointing. There are fragments flying out of it, though. That's very interesting. Huh. Oh, look at that. Something did happen. It's a pumpkin on f in fireworks. Amazing. I'll see you guys tomorrow. Bye-bye.